Okay, welcome to She's, She's Strong, Strong and, and Sassy. <laughs> we really need to perfect this at some point, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> yeah, but oh, there's perfection in imperfection, actually. Yes, Don't you think? definitely. That's definitely one of the things that we advocate here. So welcome mm -hmm. to She's Strong and Sassy. And if you want to smash your limiting stories so that you can make a positive impact for yourself and others while having fun with other women, She's Strong and Sassy is definitely the program for you. And we define a strong and sassy woman as a she who knows her worth, accepts her amazing, imperfect self, and is not afraid to use superpowers to empower herself in the world while elevating others alongside with her own growth so hello there i am joy and i have sassy carol with me right now hello everybody good to see you again so today we're going to explore a topic that's really a huge challenge for women mm. what do you like about yourself um, are you proud of yourself if these questions make you feel uncomfortable or you feel at a loss and you cannot answer them then chances is that you might have a problem with self-esteem mm, yes i agree with you joy the thing is mm. if you google the words women and self-esteem you get over seven million hits and most of all these websites on the search engine are actually problems and challenges of women facing self-esteem or on information on how to boost a woman's self-esteem. Mm, it's mm. basically problem-centric. So yeah. in the first cultural study of age, gender, and self-esteem, the researchers found that in every country that they studied, men reported higher self-esteem than women. And also, men tend to overestimate their IQ, while women tend to underestimate theirs. And both genders tend to think that their sons are brighter than their daughters. And you wonder why it's a challenge for women to feel good about themselves in such growing up context. And in the workplace, women with low self-esteem tend to be self-deprecating to minimize their achievements or to let others take credit for their own hard work. And they never move up. And finally, with friends, uh, you might be guilty of this. Women, they are unable to say no to friends. Yeah, this is something that I can totally relate to, you know, in the past. And also to add on to what you just said, uh, Joy, you know, a lot of the time they end up doing favors, women who end up doing favors that they don't want to, you know, or they don't have any time for. Mm -hmm. They end up going to places where they don't want to go, you know, mm -hmm. with people that they don't want to go with. And then in short, you know, women with low self-esteem, they have no control over her life. Indeed. So today we have a special guest, another sassy she, who to share with us her personal experience on this very important topic. And she is none other than my dearest co-founder of She Network. So please help me to welcome Laura. Welcome, Laura. Hey, Laura. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Hello. It's uh, lovely to be with you ladies again. Always enjoy our conversations. And our loves, <laughs> the things that we talk to each other about. Yes. Yeah, we should have uh, recorded the, the, the chit chat. We had pre-recording on lipsticks and what's not. I, th I thought that was the real conversation. <laughs> So it is really fun, Laura, to have you here in a completely different context, but still, you know, very pro she. So let's start this on a fun note. Uh, share with us what does it mean to you to be a strong and sassy woman? Thank you, Joy, for having me on uh, She's Strong and Sassy. And what that means to me is really um, when women step up, um, when we dare to be different, and when we make our own choices, um, that to me is the meaning of being strong and sassy. Um, I think because it uh, it can shake up the status quo. So I think being willing to do that uh, and being different and not just fitting within the box uh, for B is what it means to be strong and sassy. Well, 
Carol, that is why she's our very first guest on the Strong and Sexy show. She basically nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really no surprise, you know. And, and also because she's also a co-founder of She Network. And then, you know, the, 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 the values all align. And I'm so glad Absolutely. to have you here, Laura. So glad. Yeah, this is, feels like uh, a, another version uh, of She Network, you know, with Carol being the in-house expert for She Network for Beauty. Yeah. And then we have, it's like, we're still home, somewhat different home, but still feels like home. So ladies, let's get straight at it. So mm -hmm. let's dive straight into the challenges of personality. What are some of the self-esteem challenges that you have, that you face as a woman? Laura? Well, uh, I think that's a, that's a very powerful question. And uh, I think it was really, I, I really enjoyed looking back um, on pretty much my entire life, right? And just kind of reflecting on, on what does it mean to me? I think some of the challenges that I faced um, is tying my performance to my work. Uh, and I imagine that's something a lot of women can actually relate to. Um, and just not confusing. Uh, I think I've learned not to confuse uh, failing at something or not being good at something with uh, not being a failure myself. I think there was a time in my life when those two were so intertwined, um, where, you know, even when I was excelling, I would hear this little voice saying, you know, where's the other 4%? Because that's the environment I grew up in. You get 96% in a test and it's like, where's the other 4%? And I think that was always in the back of my mind. So uh, that sense of tying my performance to my worth. Um, and I think that that caused me before I got married to even find myself in unhealthy, toxic relationships. And I would think to myself, this is what I deserve. Um, that's how low my self-esteem was. Um, and I think, yeah, those those are some of the challenges I'd faced. Um, I would also say maybe even uh, body positivity as well, just connecting with my body, being present, being grounded, um, accepting, you know, my feminine side, my beauty, uh, my body, um, and just embracing all of me and what it means to be me. I think those have been some of the challenges um, mm -hmm. that I've had to face uh, as a woman. I think that's really what uh, every woman can relate to, and, and yeah. especially that, you know, body positivity is such a huge piece for a woman as well. With so much societal expectation on what it means to be a woman, to, to be beautiful, um, um, it's the, the pressure is really high. Like every magazine you see, right? Like until recently, like every magazine is like that they're heavily photoshopped. It's an impossible standard that every woman um, put themselves to because that's what society expects. True. I mean, so as Laura, you're sharing, you know, your your answers and what are the challenges that you face. You know, I had uh, a few of those, you know, memories that was triggered as well. Because growing up, um, I... I didn't feel a lot of confidence and my, my whole self-esteem challenges came uh, when I was a teenager. That was, that was where I started to have a skin condition. I, I had all this, you know, breakout and, and acne and all. So suddenly, you know, I, 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 was, I wasn't looking the, the societal standard of being pretty anymore. You know, people started giving, calling me names like, oh, you, you, you look ugly, you look horrible. And also one of the other challenges that I face is uh, people that I love, my family, telling me that I don't fit into a specific mold. It's like, you know, you are, because we, we are, bogged down, I'm of Chinese ethnicity, so I'm, you know, the, the whole cultural thing that I was bogged down is that like, you, 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 you speak only when you're spoken to, so you, know, you cannot be outspoken, you cannot, you, your, voices, your voice cannot be heard unless someone asks you a question. So that, my voice was being drowned out. I, I felt, that I wasn't being heard, that I became very invisible, and that you know I'm too skinny, body confidence again, body issues. I'm too skinny. I'm too tan. You know, I'm, I'm not fair enough. Yeah, these are some of the challenges that I faced when I was growing up as a child, and I could transit into my adulthood as well. And it took me a, some time, you know, to finally get out of that. What about mm -hmm. you, Joy? I think like invisible is. Uh... It's a word that I can so relate to. I don't feel seen, right? Um, I remember I always, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, not smart enough, not worthy enough. This seemed 
all this seems to be like my very good friends for a significant part of my teenage years and even in my uh, 20s and if I dare say even in my uh, early 30s. Um, as a young child, I don't feel good enough because I was adopted. So I live with the story that I am unworthy and unlovable. That's why mommy gave me up for 30 years. And then as a young model, I even contemplated having like I can't believe I'm saying this for the first time uh, on, on the public video, but like as a young mother, I even contemplated having breast implants because I don't I feel inferior to other models. And then as a move on and as a new life coach, I felt intimidated by other life coaches. Everyone just seems better and smarter than me and especially the male coaches. So everywhere I turned, everyone just seems better than me and the pressure to meet up with societal expectations and the pressure I put on myself, whether I was a child, a model, or a life coach, was the same threat going on. It was mission impossible that I just keep working on every day. So I just constantly feel not good enough, but I always put on a brave front. I always defend my fragile ego by being judgmental of others and being a defensive of my own abilities. So when I look back, it has been quite a tough ride fighting every day with myself and with society. So, and all this is because I didn't feel visible, like you shared, Carol. So I, I noticed that there are some similar themes, right? Even though uh, our stories, our upbringing is very different, but we all actually struggle with the same thing. So none of us is really unique in our challenges. Uh, it's actually at the core of it, still the same limiting stories that is holding us. So observing the woman around you, Laura, what do you think uh, is the biggest challenge? I think we've already started touching, touching on that. Um, and I believe it's the bombardment of uh, the social and the cultural expectations um, that really want to define us, right? Um, and I think it's, you know, what does it mean to be humble? What does it mean to be feminine? Uh, what does it mean to be beautiful or successful? Um, and I think at the core of it is, what does it mean to be good? Um, I've had to kind of work with that myself. Um, and I know with other women that I've had conversations with, what does it mean to be a good businesswoman? What does it mean to be a good wife? What does it mean to be a good mom? And all of those things, you know, like constantly hearing these messages that challenge who you are and what you stand for. And I think um, I'd say, yeah, it's really about learning to know yourself so that you can live from the inside out rather than outside in. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's really how we can develop and just become the best versions of ourselves by our own definitions and not just being swayed by, you know, the latest fad or whatever's going on in the world right now. So oh, I, I love what you said, Laura, about living from inside out. Uh, uh, it seems actually easier said than done for most women if they don't have some kind of support structure. So what about you, uh, Carol? What are your observations uh, looking at the women around you? What, 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 what do you think is uh, the biggest challenge for women at the moment? Well, for the women that I have, uh, you know, have the privilege to, to come in contact with, that I worked with for the past few years, uh, the one really stu stood out was the, the lack of self-identity. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it, I, I, would love, I would love to blame you know, the the fashion magazine and in societal expectation. But a lot of the time, it's actually the environment that uh, all these women are in. Um, probably, it usually starts from home, starts from childhood, and then it's also you know, the, the people that they are with as well. So the lack of identity would really stand out in terms of who they really are, you know, what they want to do, where they want to go. Then another thing is, I don't know if it's a gender thing, and they felt that women, are very self-criticizing. You know, we always look at ourselves and then we will find out what's wrong with us, right? I don't know whether it happens to you. In the past, you know, thinking back, I would, I would check myself in the mirror and I'd say, oh no, you know, I have, I have this line on, on, on my eye or, oh no, I, I, ha I have a pimple on my face. They're so always criticizing ourselves. And then we are, we are not also, in some, some of the, the challenges some women are facing is also because they are, they're not very good receivers in a way. You know, when you, when you compliment them, you're like, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not. And I think the last thing that I would say that it would be the feeling of inadequacy. There's so many different benchmarks that's being put upon women, you know, as, as a, 
as a, I felt it more, more like a burden for us end of the day, right? So like uh, we have this expectation from, from the family and a societal expectation, you know, how we should behave. And I totally relate to what Laura had shared earlier, you know, when you're in a workplace, you know, then you're also, you know, you're competing with other people, right? How good you are, you know, and, and you, it's, it's all boils down to, to numbers. And it's, it's very difficult for women because it's like when you, when you have a, a set standard, but the thing is, when you have this set standard, it's, it's not applicable to everybody. Now, I, I felt that because of that, a lot of women, we felt that we are inadequate. We, we, can't, we can't measure up. Yeah, but the thing is, like, who set all these rules in the first place? Who set all these benchmarks in the first place? You know, isn't it time for us to look at it and then smash this glass ceiling that's restricting us? What about you, Joy? Mm. I think uh, from my observation, I tend to think that it is the desire to please others and we're always putting ourselves last and we're always putting others first because simply because firstly we are wired that way we are nurturers but it is also fueled by the feeling of not good enough and the desire to be loved by the people around us and to be accepted by society by constantly trying to reach that um, perfection standard it's not possible it's a um, we, we've all tried it and we all suffered because, and, and what you mentioned earlier, Carol, the inadequacy and so on, that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to please others. So to me, at the core of it is um, this desire to please others even even when it doesn't make sense, even when it's un unhealthy, but we will do it, um, we will do it at, despite the negative consequences to self. That's that's how great is our desire for external acceptance, you know, like what... Uh, Laura mentioned earlier, it's really uh, this whole outside in process that we, we, we engaged in. You, you see mothers struggle to make dinner, clean the house. At the same time, you have to be a great lover and then you have to be a great mom and daughter-in-law while maintaining their work performance every day, day in, day out. Me time and self-care, that's a... Uh, that doesn't exist in most women vocabulary. It is an unreachable goal for them because they don't even have time to do all of this thing I've just mentioned. What self-care? What me time? Like it's like a myth for them. So so I, I think that that is um that is very sad. And we women, but I have to highlight that we women have to take a responsibility also because we allow ourselves to be put in this type of position. You know, like collectively, we kind of agree to try and match the standard. And so I think it is time to, to take responsibility for where we want to go moving forward. Sure, you know, our history has been like that. We are taught things that is not necessarily optimal or healthy, but we own the present and we own the future and collectively we can make a different choice. So that's how I feel. So coming to our own uh, personal experience, um, Laura, I, I, um, well, you are my co-founder, so I know that you have really uh, experienced a lot of challenges, you know, growing up um, and then now being a, a African in Malaysia. There's so many challenges, even beyond being a woman, even, you know, uh, uh, other challenges, just the simple fact that you're not in your own country and being a woman. So despite all of these challenges that you, you are now blossoming into a, a powerful a woman enabler, what have helped you? In, uh, in this journey to build up your own self-esteem. Thank you, Joy. I feel very, very, very touched by your words. Um, yeah, and I think it's uh, it goes back to what you mentioned earlier as well, right? Just that sense of having support, having community, that has been a critical part of my journey. Um, and I think it's even accepting my uniqueness um, and understanding that I have a choice to make. Uh, and it, it's one thing to know this, uh, to be aware, to have that awareness of I am unique, I have a choice, but it's another thing completely to have, I think the skills, the tools to be able to actually live that out on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I think that's how at least my journey into coaching came from that realization um, after having all these conversations and working with different women that, it starts with that awareness and that embracing, I have a choice, I can 
Um, I can choose how to live my life going forward um, and embracing the mindset that pretty much everything is a learnable skill, right? Including the things that uh, may seem obvious or innate to other people. You know, now we talk about adulting, right? Uh, you know, there's a sense that being an adult should be natural, innate, obvious, but there are all these different skills that you just need to practice. Um, and I think as culture changes, as society changes, some of those places where maybe we we used to learn what that looks like, you know, as part of our lives, some of those spaces aren't there anymore. And so we actually have to be a lot more conscious uh, and deliberate about practicing, about learning some of these skills, learning to love yourself, learning what it means to stand up for yourself, learning, you know, to stand in your own self-esteem. I think all of those are powerful skills that we can actually learn and develop over time. Um, I think also forgiving myself uh, was a key turning point. Um, mm. and, and I think that comes with um, just learning to embrace uh, what it means to be me, right? And that I will mess up, I will make mistakes. Um, and then with that, like once I know I can forgive myself, then that gives me the freedom to question my own stories, um, the things that I have told myself. Um, and especially that little voice that uh, that tends to embrace the brokenness more than the beauty. Um, and I think you, you said it very beautifully in terms of, you know, uh, we have a responsibility um, as adults, as women to, chart our own path. It's no longer about what we were told, uh, the stories that we had when we were growing up. It's now as we look forward, as we look even into the now, like what can I do now? Where do I start? Um, and again, that sense of community, having uh, mirrors uh, to you know shine light on some of those blind spots uh, has been absolutely uh, critical for me in terms of growing and developing my self-esteem. Having people who hold the space um, who love me in unconditionally, um, you know, that inner circle, and also having those people who challenge me unconditionally, who don't accept my BS. Like when I want to live at a lower standard, they're like, no, you're better than this. You can rise. And I think when done in that safe space with people that we love, with people that we trust, um, it begins to shift even the way that we see ourselves, the way that we interact with the world um, we begin to see role models and we begin to think, oh, that's possible, right? If she could do it, you know, what's stopping me? And beginning to, again, question those stories, ask myself um, some of those things has really been, uh, yeah, just fundamental in terms of just having that very strong foundation um, as I look forward into who I can be uh, in future and who I choose to be uh, and taking responsibility for that. Wow, that's a lot that you have shared about all the different things, inner and outer, that you have activated to build your own self-esteem. So, Laura, I'm really proud of you because, Carol, can you sense that determination, that energy when she was describing? It's like, just go, just do and do something. It's okay if I'm slow, but I will do something. And uh, what was funny was uh, uh, when you talk about the now, you say like, what can I do now? It just made me think of one of the chapter in the book that I'm writing. But that's exactly what uh, the chapter was about. It's about the power of now. How can we take advantage of you know the power of now? Sounds so simplistic, but I think some of us are guilty of not activating the now. We just stay in the past. We're, we're trapped in our limiting stories. We don't question our story, question the validity of these stories. And a lot of the stories in our head and the beliefs in our head, they're pure bullshit. They're not even mm -hmm. our beliefs. We grow with them and then we just took it wholesale. We ran with it. And it's it's we're not running the show. We're not running our life. It's this bullshit story that's not even our own. We don't even we didn't even create some of this. And uh, we're allowing it to run our show. So I love uh, especially this point, questioning your own story. Um, but I think like you know, coming from a place of self-compassion as well, and not to question to judge yourself, but to question mm. because you believe that you deserve you know a better future and you are going to do that for yourself using the power of now indeed and and i, I can totally relate to what joy had said and then you know, i was just sitting there you know listening and watching you laura it's like you are just this diamond shining and uh i can see you know why you're doing what you're doing <laughs> the diamond itself yeah 
and you know, just it, it seems to me that there's there's quite some similarities as well. Um, I do have a lot of all this internal conversation. You call it, you know, questioning your own story. For me, it would be you know conversations in my head, uh, telling me, I don't think you can do this. Maybe you should try another way. Go for the easy way out. And I felt that that this. I, I don't know. I, I believe a lot of women who can actually relate to that. You know, we always have this self prep rather than prepping ourselves up. We're telling ourselves why we can't do it and try to dissuade us uh, not not to do that. And that I felt, you know, is something that we need to be hundred percent aware of because we're always having this this mind. And once we once we are aware, we can immediately switch that. And and by switching that, it's like what what you just said, Laura. You know, by questioning, is this true? You know how does it serve me, and then how does it serve others? So that having that awareness is very very important uh, for that you know building my, uh, my own self esteem. And then the next thing is stepping out of the comfort zone for me. Mm-hmm. Once the awareness is there, it's like how do I take the next step? Do I want to stay remain in status quo? A lot of us want to do it because it's comfortable. It's something that is known. And stepping out of the comfort zone, going towards you know, finding answers is always very difficult. But then, if we don't, then we always forever trap in that, in that whole cycle, a vicious cycle of self doubt. So mm. for me, um, being able to step out of the comfort zone is not a personal effort. It's actually an effort. And as you say, having a community, having female who are like minded to be able to, to step into that. And I was very blessed and very privileged to to have this group of women friends as well as uh, women in other communities the communities like the she network itself as well you know to to provide that kind of support and help me out of that comfort zone and continue to explore continue to to improve become a better version of myself and then and having said that the next thing that helped me in my own personal self-esteem journey uh was actually to to invest in my own personal development and growth you know we have done i've done through in life we've done through all the academic and we've gotten where we want to go career-wise, but then the learning doesn't stop there, right? Academics done, but then again, is the next one is like, what about your own purpose? You know, how are you growing in your mind? What are the books that you are reading? You know, and how are you moving forward as a person? You know, and then as you as a woman, we go through different stages in life. You know, from being single, from a child, you know, to being becoming an adult, being single, and then being with a partner. So you have to work with the partner, and to being a parent. You know, all of all this. We go through all these different stages, and then we need to constantly improve ourselves and invest in personal growth, so that we are able to give back to those people that we love. So this is what uh, I have gone through myself, and I hope you know that is uh, this sharing is is valuable to everybody who's watching this right now. Mm-hmm. So as for me, I think it's really hard and hard work for many years observing myself, trying to understand my own fears and reaction and why I keep attracting the same dysfunctional partners, relationships, um, experimenting with different techniques, following different coaches through the years. So it it sounds like some common thread again uh, surfacing and also like what, uh, so so like the the self-development piece that Carol shared. questioning myself like this story all of us questioning the internal dialogue that we have so it seems like the self-awareness piece is really the first piece and most crucial piece to evolve and to empower ourselves and to begin our journey of healing and self-empowerment the other thing that made a lot of difference for me was to after this particularly bad dysfunctional relationship where i walked out um starting to learn about self-compassion what is this strange thing that uh, you know i don't see anyone in my environment doing self-compassion is a very foreign concept unheard of compassion towards others sure like you hear it all the time but self-compassion what on earth does that even mean i had no idea so uh but so desperate to heal myself after the break from the breakup pain learning about self-compassion and taking responsibility for my own healing, regardless of who inflicted um, the pain. I think that really helped me to heal and empower myself, regardless of what happened to me in my childhood, uh, who gave me up, and and, and and all this dysfunctional relationship, um, what boyfriend did what, it does not matter. I take responsibility for my own healing and empowerment. I think that sense of that decision 
um, I think that decision played a huge, huge part in uh, building my self-esteem and, and the self-compassion piece was very huge for me as well. Again, I think it relate to what Laura said earlier, like just learning to forgive myself, right? Sure, sometimes I messed up, but just making that decision and having that intention that doesn't matter what mistake I make, I'm going to forgive myself. So I think like it's pretty much the same thing as um, me working on my self-compassion. So it's pretty amazing, like... Uh, Based on our discussion so far, we just keep seeing the same threads coming up, right? So this gives you clue that all these are skills that can be learned, right? And if you're privileged enough, you get to learn it in a safe environment with a like-minded woman, you know, in a guided program where there's some hand-holding, there's scaffolding, right? And um, hopefully you don't have to learn it the hard way that the way you know, Carol, Laura and I did. Um, if you can learn it the easy way, seriously, why learn it the hard way? These are actual skills. As you can see, we all adopted similar strategies and we didn't have a meeting about it, like ladies. We just somehow stumbled uh, a lot of pain, a lot of lost time to arrive at where we are. So, uh, But it doesn't have to be the case. These are skills that can be learned and that is what is exciting and what is most hopeful and what what really gives me a lot of joy is that we are all part of the she network and this she network is pro all women we are not a tribe we are a tribe we are part of a bigger tribe that the tribe is called women but we are not a tribe per se and we are all part of she network we are pro men uh, we love the man by the way for the record <laughs> we are not here the trash man we have our three our four, he for she ambassadors, because that's how important it is for us to express that position. So, ladies, as part of She Network, how do you think that we can support the She in our community in building their self-esteem in us, supporting and sustaining our sense of self together? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about what you just mentioned about um we are not anti-men, right? I think when sometimes you see she um, and a little bit of kind of the more traditional feminist movement, you get, you know, the image of protesting on the streets, you know, down with the men. Yeah. Um, you know, burn the bra. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I my bra, I'm not going to burn it. Like, wow, it's a nice Very bra. useful. <laughs> <laughs> much needed piece of equipment um yeah and it uh, <laughs> it brought to mind a conversation i was having um last week i think uh with uh, one of the women in my women in leadership uh limelight series and we were talking about when women are empowered we are able to empower men as well an empowered woman can empower men and even you know an empowered man a man can empower women and that just reminds me of um, the fact that I, I imagine in all of our journeys, we have men who have also empowered women, who have empowered us along the way. And I think when we are empowered, we can empower anyone. So I think it's, um, yeah, I was just thinking about that as you were sharing, you know, just uh, what our vision is for She Network and empowering women is we want everyone on that journey because when we are empowered, we can empower all the people that are around us. Um, and I think for me, how how we can support um, the she's in building up uh, self-esteem and building up ourselves. I think uh, there's there's kind of like three different things that I that I was thinking about, right? And the first is to start with acknowledgement. So acknowledging our strengths, acknowledging uh, the greatness that we see um, in ourselves and in each other, acknowledging the goodness and the talent that is there um, and just nurturing, even though it might seem like a small seed, but acknowledging and nurturing that seed, I think is really important. Um, the next thing I think is uh, creating, um, creating opportunities to shine. And I think on the flip side as well is accepting opportunities to shine. So creating and accepting those opportunities, right? Um, where you can practice, where you can embrace uh, being who you are and even being who you want to be. So practicing that um, and having those opportunities. Um, I know in previous times, like I wouldn't be on camera, right? I was terrified of, you know, whether it's public speaking, being in front of a camera. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I talk about in one of my programs was my journey from being self-conscious to becoming a more conscious self um, and being able to stand and, you know, have this conversation with you today. Um, and, I, and I would say the last one is 
celebrating success. So this is one that I'm still working on. Um, that even uh, I think it was last week. Uh, one one of my coaches was actually asking me, "Okay, how how have you celebrated the successes that you've had?" Because um, I just had like an award and acknowledgement, and he was like, "Okay, that's great. How are you celebrating?" And I was like, "Wow, that's uh, that's something I need to uh, put in a lot more work. Like I know how to work hard, but I need to work on playing hard as well." And so I think having she network, connecting with other women. Um, and even learning to just have fun, play together, connect and celebrate each other, um, I think are really just powerful in terms of supporting each other so that we can keep uh, succeeding, keep growing, keep becoming more of who we were made to be. Mm. Beautiful. Carol? Mm. Well, for me, I would feel that, uh, you know, sharing of knowledge, which is actually what we are currently doing um, right now. You know, mm -hmm. we have all these individual experts in, in the SHE network, uh, in all sub subject experts coming in and you know, sharing their knowledge. I think that is actually valuable because when, when I was going through my, my own struggles and, and throughout the journey, I wish that there is a community like this or, you know, uh, um, a platform like this that I can actually tap into and then to to understand so that I can, you know, I can feel safe. So she Network is definitely a safe place for us to be vulnerable. And the knowledge sharing is an added added bonus for for uh, for the women within the network itself. And then most importantly is also having a personal development program that is developed you know, to suit the individual women's need. Because I think what's missing in in the uh, in the world right now it's targeted. Um, and customizable, you know, to specific needs. And I think, you know, the women within the SHE network are all a very unique group of women. You know, they've gone through certain um, challenges in life and then they're all looking for specific ways to grow and to become better. And I really, really like what Laura said about celebrating because uh, yeah, I did kind of just trigger this, this memory of, 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 of what, I, what I went through as well. And I had this conversation as well with one of my, my coaches and then it's yeah, remember to celebrate and make it a point to celebrate little little successes, little little things along the way. It could be as good as you know, just I I um I spend some time today, you know, with myself. Just all these little goals. And like you, I have forgotten how to really celebrate. Yeah, I think this is this is what we can really do here together. And I see that one of the celebrations that we can have as a community for, for SHE Network is having a, a SHE retreat somewhere. Oh, I love that idea, Laura. I, I, yeah, Ooh. this is just something and I thought it would be great and then you really triggered that, that, that idea and then yeah. this is something we can look at, you know, celebrate together, not just virtually, we can celebrate in person. I think uh, Carol is planting seeds <laughs> in us, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. And I think it just reminded me why we call our program what we call, right? Strong and Sassy. It was perfectly random. We were at a loss what to call it, um, wanting to refer to strengths, but it's not just about strengths. We wanted to balance the equation. And then the I just, I guess because it's, you know, S and S, and suddenly my brain just went like randomly, oh, Strong and Sassy. And then I was like, huh? <laughs> I text Carol, I said, uh, what do you think of Strong and Sassy? And then like, to my surprise, she she liked it. I think that's exactly uh, in, in the same energy as, you know, celebrating successes, having fun. It's not all so serious, you know, just just developing ourselves and just growing and, and all very serious business. But we want to have fun too. So I thought Strong and Sassy was such a uh, nicely just encompasses everything that we want to be, right? We not just want to be serious about our growth. We also want to have fun. You know, we we have this beautiful body that we are born with and and, and women are playful, right? We we want to celebrate that. We want to nourish that playful spirit as well because that will also support us in the roles that we play and and, and so on. And that's also why Laura, like when we started She Network, I was like, why well, everything's so serious? You remember? I said, no, no, no. Uh, too serious already. We have this 18 expert, 18 expert in our panel. Wow, so scary. Even I, who, <laughs> who gave the idea of the expert panel, I think very scary. We are so successful at that. Like, okay, wait, very serious. Huh? And then we decided, okay, we need to have fun ambassadors. 
in the yeah. she network right again in the same spirit of celebrating having fun celebrating being a woman celebrating being a woman together so i think that's something that um we want to emphasize on even in a strong and sassy program that's why that's why i decided to partner with carol because she, i mean she, she teaches all the fun things makeup department skincare yeah right? you know what earrings to wear because we, we want to balance the equation while you're hard at work while you're trying to do all this juggling every day have some fun wear that dress that you love wear that bow lipstick like carol and laura go for <laughs> it right or while you while you are juggling you can still have fun at the same time who says that you can't right? it's your choice so i i just love it that we are um one of my concerns was like okay we're talking about self-esteem right again like whoa so serious that i was thinking oh, i'm not sure how we're going to cover the sassy whether we get to cover the sassy aspect in today's episode but i love that it just came out uh, spontaneously just flowed right out of the conversation um because we're women right and it also reminded me carol like uh I have to be uh, I'm grateful for Carol who's always pushing me uh, because I am desiring to go back to teaching some sort of movement class for women. I kind of missed it. Um, but then from the context of uh, empowerment in a body, mind, spirit context and Carol, mm -hmm. uh, since we got to know each other from my pole dancing studio many years ago, is kind of encouraging me to move in that direction. And we had an idea. We said, oh, maybe we just get all our favorite she's and then we can have our own private, you know, uh, body body movement class just to have a giggle just to have fun right mm -hmm. and just to get me started because it is a long break since the last time i taught the body movement class um so again it's about fun we're not just learning and growing together we're also having fun together sharing with each other lipstick tips makeup care skin care tips right and that's what she network is about right it's not uh it's, it's knowledge sharing and um Laura mentioned about acknowledging your strengths, creating opportunity to shine, celebrate successes. So I wanted to also highlight that when I think of uh, what a of you responses was to this question, it appeared to me that one, one phrase keep popping up, it's showing up. But right? when you acknowledge your strength, you are showing up, you're owning it, right? And you're telling the world, this is my strength. This is what I'm good at, right? And creating opportunity to shine. In, in, that shine is literally showing up and instead of you know hiding behind hiding behind the husband hiding behind the boss hiding behind the employee you show up you claim your credit yes i did the hard work right and i'm going to celebrate it right and um so what came to my mind was really showing up um we did some uh, simple survey with our she network uh, about this issue about building up and sustaining self-esteem uh, self together so two responses that uh, came came up was one was to be non-judgmental and to learn how to set healthy boundaries so the thought that came to my mind was that in order to empower women our she's in the community to show up I think that's exactly the basis that we need to set an uh, 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 environment that is non-judgmental, an environment that where we, while we are giving and we are supporting each other, it is still necessary to set healthy boundaries, just like with any two individuals or in any uh, group. And I think, therefore, the key point here for me would be safe space. I think she network we really so crucial for us to have that safe space so that our she feel comfortable to open up and to be vulnerable to to know and to have the confidence that they are in a non-judgmental space with other women who are ready to hear them and to support them so um and once we have that safe space so uh, then the next phrase that comes to my mind is provoking growth which is exactly what you, the two of you are mentioning here provoking growth i think opening up is scary so is growth because it demands that you move out of your comfort zone um woman is not necessarily that good at it i mean if, if we're that good then we don't need you know all this woman support structure we can just do it ourselves i think women tend to be actually more community based we draw our strength from being in a community it's been like that through the ages so i think opening up is scary and so is growth but it is easier for us to get out of our comfort zone when we know that we're in a safe space and I know this woman, they've got my back, right? So I really want She Network to be that space for our She's 
And I think that that will be such a great blessing for all in our community. It will be a, a very a powerful space for the blossoming of the feminine spirit together and for elevating a growth of self in of community. So uh, th th this is how I feel. So I love how we seem to be on the same page. We use different words, uh, we we have different phrases, but from the beginning of this conversation to the end, we're all on the same page, even though we never had a meeting and say, hey, let's, let's discuss our answer and then let's make sure there's uh, some similarity. It didn't happen. That conversation didn't happen. I mean, everything is a uh, confession time, right? It's a rush job, right? This episode, everybody rushed uh, to, to, uh, on, in their own time to, to prepare for the show. And yet, so many threads uh, come out and it's all the same. We're all on the same page. Uh, I've always known that for a fact, but still uh, experiencing this right now feels really amazing for me. Well, what are your thoughts, ladies? I mean, it's always exciting uh, to get together with uh, both of you and uh, the other women in our She Network community. And I think that's, like you said, I think that sense of um, shared values, that same passion that we have for our own growth and to support other women in their growth. I think that's one of the things that has brought us together um, and even to be able to have this conversation. So, yeah, I'm absolutely excited. Um, yeah, to see what comes ahead, some of the ideas. Uh, like the retreat that Carol has mentioned, who knows where that could go. Um, yeah, and I think when we come together, that's where you know some of these amazing ideas uh, come about. So thank you so much for having me and inviting me to <laughs> have this conversation with you. We're so happy to have you, Laura, as our very first guest for the Strong and Sassy show. So what is your one tip for being strong and sassy? My one tip for being strong and sassy is to own the choice, own the change, and own the challenge. Um, and again, especially when it shakes up the status quo. So know that you have choice and own the choice that you're going to make. Know that it, it can be scary to make changes, but own the change and choose that this is what you want. This is where you want to go. This is the future that you want. And own the challenge because that doesn't necessarily mean it will be easy along the way, but when you own the challenge, you prepare yourself um, and you trust yourself that you can face whatever comes along the way. So that's my one tip, own the choice, own the change and own the challenge. I always love the way you can just uh, make make everything so simple, so, so on point, Carol. Like, it, it, is that not empowering just to read, uh, just, just to hear her tip? It's about ownership. Yeah, indeed, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, you know, in order to, to take the first step towards change, it's actually to own, to own our story. That's the, definitely the first step towards transformation. Mm. So, wow, we have spent a glorious 50 minutes together uh, going, uh, really going in-depth into this, I think, a uh, very important topic for women. And I'm so grateful to to know that we are everyone's on the same page and i feel like i have really uh, personally learned a bit more about self-esteem and women because of um, hearing all your input as well so uh, audience we have a free giveaway for you uh, so as i start to work on my next book i'm giving away my autobiography from zero to shakti so to grab your e-copy from this uh, url tiny, tiny url dot joyling birthday uh, you can look at the scroller to take note of the website so as always, thank you, Laura, for coming on the show. It has been a fun one hour with you talking about something that actually we have never discussed before. <laughs> so, okay. So, ladies, as always, we're going to end our Strong and Sassy show with the Lotus Pose. Show me your Lotus, Laura. <laughs> Her Lotus is kind of more roundish, right? <laughs> So I say it looks like this diamond prong. She's pronging out this huge diamond in her hands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for watching till the next episode, everyone. Stay strong and stay sassy. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.